listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. Another review of this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. It was the June 3rd, 2024 edition of Raw. And if I'm not mistaken, this week's episode of Raw took place... Where did this week's episode of Raw take place? I had to pull up a different um, uh, site because for some reason Cage Side, which I normally pull up for my notes, was not up to date. I should have been a little more prepared here. I do apologize, guys. Let me see here. They're showing that Raw took place, like, drawing a blank. Come on. Oh, wait, was it Hershey, Pennsylvania? Okay, yeah, Hershey, Pennsylvania is where um, Raw took place. Which, of course, another place I would love to go again sometime is definitely Hershey Park. How many years since I was eight years old? It's been over 20 years. Yow, I'm getting old. Uh, 22 years, actually, of course, you could say. Well, 21. Whatever. Anyways, we're not here to talk about amusement parks. We're here to talk about Raw. We are a week and a half away from Clash at the Castle 2024. Also, thank you very much also for the support on the Clash at the Castle uh, match card. As we have, I think, what, 1,200 um, views? Almost 1,300 views on it in the, within the first four days. Now, usually the past couple have done... They've been hot the first couple days, then they slow down pretty quickly. But I'll take the, that, that average amount of views um, on match cards. I would like it to be a little bit more again, but I'll take it. So I thank you guys for that as well. And also, if you didn't get to, make sure you check out my new Turn Alert graphics as well. As I posted a new episode of Turn Alert yet last night. And I really, really like those new graphics I made for Turn Alert. Probably will be another one coming out of this show. One that I feel like it's been like lingering for a while, and I I was guessing the way they, you know, acted tonight. Well, well on this week's episode of Raw, that they are heels again. I'm not 100 sure. We'll just have to wait and find out, of course. But it is um, it is just my opinion. But we'll see. But overall, another really great episode of Raw. I thought we had a lot of great storytelling. A lot of great segments. We, of course, hit the fallout from the big kiss from Liv Morgan on Dominic Mysterio. She goes from kissing Dom Dom to being all seductive and whatnot. And Judgment Day, for one of the first times, for the most part, seemed to kind of have things go right for them. And, of course, we had more of Chad Gable... You know, being you know rough on his um on his students in the academy, and Sami Zayn trying to reason with them. Of course, that did not quite work work out though, as of course things happen. But it looks like for now, everybody's staying staying put with Alpha Academy. Um, we also had some great matches, such as one with Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser, which was awesome. A few others. But we're going to talk about it. Rather than overviewing it all, we're going to get in, just get right to it, talk about it. So we opened up the show with Liv Morgan coming out. Say, and instead of welcoming everybody to Monday Night Raw, she welcomes everybody to the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour. It's been very sweet for Liv taking out Rhea Ripley and then becoming the new Women's World Champion. After she claimed she put Becky Lynch into early retirement, which I still would say if you were going to write her off the show, do something a little bit more to just have her get her face slammed into the cage. But 
Just my opinion, but Becky is probably on a little bit of a break right now. Don't know when we'll see her again. Um, but she has the cherry on top. She got the kiss. Dominic Mysterio. Dom Dom walks out. And he goes to speak. And of course the crowd still booing him and just not letting him talk. Before he finally tells Liv that mommy will kill you when you come back. And then Liv said... I'll make it worth it for Dom Dom. She tells Dom that she meant what she said. She wants to take everything from Rhea. Including her Latino heat. Dom Dom. And she literally backs Dominic into the turnbuckle. And basically starts, you know, rubbing him. him And is basically being all seductive and whatnot. Which I'm pretty sure a lot of people thought was hot. Married man, I can't, you know, give my opinions on it, but, you know. Um, Dom, of course, you know, is trying to look like he's not really knowing what's going on. But at the same time, he does. He just doesn't want to admit it quite yet. It's probably going to be, I would say it may not be until Rhea comes back till we get Dom finally admitting, you know, what him and Liv are actually up to. But anyways, of course, as that's going on, Finn Balor comes out and gets between Dom and Liv. And Finn tells Liv that neither Dom nor Judgment Day want you around. Liv's like, okay, I'll go. But for now. And of course, as she leaves, she gives Dom, Dom a pat on the head. And Dom clearly enjoyed that. But of course, you know, he you know can't show it yet. Oh, great stuff to open it up again. I just... Again, like I say, just give... I kept saying, you know, just give Liv just a wee bit of time to build her character, and it'll be great. And again, I'm loving what they're doing with it right now. The direction she's going with it. Um, I don't know if she will be beating Rhea, though, when Rhea comes back. But, as she probably will be at first, because they will, like, you know, get more heat on Liv and get more sympathy on Rhea. And make Rhea a baby face. This is basically a double turn. But I think it's great stuff. Of course, it wasn't the last we saw of Liv. Not till later on in the night. But, um... We then had a really hard-hitting physical match between Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser. These two, again, very great chemistry. Very similar, you know, rhythm to what we got with, like, Sheamus and Gunther. Again, Ludwig, I definitely... I could definitely, you know, tell they have things planned for him. And again, I like that, you know, it's... Without it just being just Ludwig and Gunther, Giovanni Vinci's in catering on SmackDown now, sadly. But I do like that although there's still Imperium, they're doing their own thing. And Ludwig is getting some singles attention. And he's doing great. Like great presence, great talker, great chemistry with Sheamus. They them boys just whooped each other. Um, but then, of course, the, um, Sheamus was also selling the injured knee from whenever he had his King of the Ring match against Gunther. And Ludwig did take advantage of that throughout the match. And when Sheamus went to go for a bro kick, his knee gave out. And Ludwig capitalized on that. And eventually won when he kicked Sheamus in the knee and gave him a roll-up. And Ludwig Kaiser... Gets a win over Sheamus. I mean, he kind of cheated a little bit, but still, you know, he did it all on his own. So, I thought it was a great way to put him over and give him some momentum as a single star. I'll see where this goes. But he gets the win there. We also have a backstage then where Elia Dragunov tries to warn Ricochet about Braun Breaker. And Ricochet is like, in, is interested in and he's saying he just wants to get his hands on Braun, which they had a match later on the show. Um, Dragon Lee had a match with Finn Balor. Judgment Day did declare that they were going to get the job done, and they seemingly did. Because although this was a good match, and I know some people think Dragon Lee still holding back, he will shine eventually. He is awesome, of course. Uh, we had some involvement from Judgment Day though this match that did lead to Finn Balor getting a win over Dragon Lee. And afterwards, everybody's attacking Dragon Lee until Braun Strowman comes out. Uh, and of course, Rey Mysterio also comes out to make the save. And it sets up later on in the night, we're going to get Braun Strowman versus Carlito. Because um, 
because Daniel Priest says everybody else is working on getting, getting doing their part, and he needs someone to take care of the Braun Strowman problem. So JD couldn't do it last week. So now he's leaving it up to Carlito to see if he can get the job done. Did he know, or did he need some help? Which, of course, we'll get to that. Um, oh, so we have Sami Zayn coming out, saying that um, this issue with Chad Gable has gone far on enough. He wants Gable alone in the ring right now. Everyone else, though, except for Gable from Alpha Academy, do come out. And Maxine Dupree is le- reading a, a statement written by Gable where he runs down everyone in the ring and he demands an Intercontinental title match. Sammy agrees to get up to him. And then Ido tries to talk some sense into Akira Dozawa, Otis, and Maxine Dupree. They tell him that you don't have to keep doing this yourself. They need to set themselves free from Jack Gable. But then Jack Gable goes out of nowhere and attacks Sami Zayn. And then whenever Gable's holding on to Sammy, he demands Otis to hit Sammy. Otis, though, is all conflicted and can't do it. And uh, Otis then has Maxine Dupree. Not going to lie, I was a little afraid he was going to say bark like a dog. We didn't get that. But he told Maxine to get down on both of her knees and beg. And um, basically beg for mercy. But then, of course, uh, that's what things got too far. And Otis actually stepped into Gable's face. And then Sammy and Gable brawl again. And then Gable pushed Sammy, though, into Otis. Who then got, got pushed into the ring ropes. And that knocked both Maxine Dupree and Akira Tozawa off the apron. Just when it looked like Otis was finally going to turn on Chad Gable. But, of course... Um, Gable tries to convince Otis that Sammy was the one who pushed him. Otis then takes um, Sammy and hits him with the compactor or world's strongest slam, whatever you want want to call his finisher. And um, based off of that, Chad Gable was then celebrating backstage. He thought everybody did their jobs there. Did they really know or was, was it just a little bit of pure luck and Gable being a manipulator or whatnot? But another great segment... We're going to match to Clash the Castle. This is where I do think we are going to get Chad Gable winning the match. If we don't have Gable win this time, then that, that's definitely going to be a missed opportunity there. But another great segment from them. Um, Braun Breaker has a good match with Ricochet. And Breaker does get the victory. And he tries to end Ricochet with ring steps afterwards until Elia Dragunov makes the save. Still waiting to announce a triple threat. I still say, from based on my predictions from my, my printed card, still say make this, this a triple threat match. And again, make it a qualifying match for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Please. Please. Kiana James had her Raw debuting match. She can watch her reaction. Again, I don't really know much about Kiana James. It seems like she's doing like kind of like a businesswoman type gimmick and whatnot. She does beat Natalia with her win her finisher. She calls it the 401k. But she has to win. Okay. I'm assuming she's a heel. Based off of, of course, you know, how she's booked. I just don't really don't know much though about her though to you know get that invested in her yet. So, got a little bit of work to do with me on Kiana. Just saying. Um, we have a backstage. I think we have a backstage is where you know Carrie and Cross. First off, is again trying to drive a wedge between New Day, and we also get another backstage segment where Sonya Deville is trying to give more of a pep talk to Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. Where that's going, I got no clue. We'll get back to the women's tag titles in a second and also with um, Final Testament and New Day. Because I actually like what they did with Final Testament. I'm starting to get a little more faith in in them again. Uh, But then Braun Strowman squashed Carlito. But then after the match, Judgment Day all stormed in to basically attack Strowman like three on one. 
Dominic, though, got chased away. I think he actually did take a bump. I think Strowman ran into him. Um, but whenever Strowman was about to get his, his hands on Dom even more, out came Liv Morgan and, st- and stood right in between them. Um, and then Strowman focused on anyone else he can uh, while Dom just licked his wounds and everybody else was just beaten down on Strowman. So Carlito didn't take him out one-on-one. But with some help, Judgment Day did take out Braun Strowman. Only though is, again, where is this story actually going to go for Braun? I'm not 100% sure. But, um, I don't know. Again, it just feels like, like to me, it just reminded me of when he used to kind of be booked in these, like, pointless, you know, storylines where it's not going to do much for him. I don't know. We'll see where, where, where it goes, where goes with, 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 with Braun. Um... We have an in-ring segment with the women's tag champs, Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill, who are talking about being on Raw and how they're going to defend the titles anywhere they go, blah, blah, blah. And then they get interrupted by the number one contenders, Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler, and it actually leads to them having a match. Um, and when it looked like that the women's tag champs were about to retain, though, outrunning came the Unholy Union of Isle of Fire and Isle of Dawn. Now, what was interesting though about this, this is what can lead me to the turn alert, is that both teams, the Unholy Union, and Zoe and Shayna, both beat down on the on the champs. And then they just stared each other down, Unholy Union and Shayna and Zoe. So I'm starting to think that maybe in this feud at least they are reverting um, Sonya and Shane. I'm mean, sorry, Sonya, Z- Joey, Zoe and Shayna back to being heels. So expect a turn away from there. That's what I've been wondering for a while because they felt like tweeners. But if you're not, if you're going to attack the baby faces and just you know not even put a hand on the heels, I am I. Pretty sure they're heels now, but it's probably going to step to a triple threat match for Clash the Castle between uh, Bianca and Jade, Shayna and Zoe, and the Unholy Union. Probably because, again, Unholy Union, at least Isla Dawn, I believe, is, is from Scotland. So they're giving a lot of people their moment to shine in their home country, which is nice. Uh, Jay Uso also had a promo. Uh, basically hyped up how he plans on being the next Mr. Money in the Bank. Nice tease there. Uh, EO Sky, out of anger, did attack Lyra Valkyria, which is, I guess is going to mean they're probably not going to get in the feud between Lyra and Liv, unless they're doing a triple threat or something like that, but we'll see. Uh, Authors of Pain did beat the final test. Th- th- sorry, did beat the New Day, which they've been getting some wins. And I do like that. Again, I think the guy gets a little more spice onto them still. But I'm hoping this move to Raw is going to finally get the Vinyl Testament, like the push that they deserve. Especially, again, for Karrion Cross. The guy is just artistically a genius. Uh, and then finally, the main event was the was uh, Damian Priest taking on Rey Mysterio in another good match. Um, uh, Damian Priest, though, eventually did win with the South of Heaven. And afterwards, Drew McIntyre came out to attack Priest, but Priest put him through a table with the, ha- the South of Heaven, and Judgment Day stood tall at the end of the Raw. One few times, that's really ever happened, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that's Raw. I know my notes weren't the best, because normally I rely on um, on um, on Cage Side seats normally, but again, Cage Side, for some reason, did not have the notes, so I grabbed you know, just another random place for notes as well. Um... But yeah, I, I'll give Raw a B plus though, because I still thought there was a lot of good. It just it was hard for me to, to, to talk about this episode because I don't have my notes in front of me too well. But um, but yeah, other than that, I think we're good here. I want to check out. What are your guys' thoughts on this episode of Raw, guys? Gotta give it a B plus and everything else going on. Leave us down in the comment section below, and also be sure as always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content on my channel. Follow me on Twitter as well at the Club of the Man ninety three. You may also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the Club of the Man 1993. And tell you guys, I'll check it out. I'll catch you guys all later. And do not forget, in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. And for I am.
the man himself. And that is not just an opinion, my friends. That is a fact of life. Yeah!